Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to part two of your video lesson today. We are going to be learning about pop art and the artist Andy Warhol. This is one of my favorite art movements as well as my one of my favorite artists of all time. So the pop idea, after all, was that anybody could do anything. So naturally, we were all trying to do it all. So pop idea, pop art stands for the word popular. So pop is short for popular, and that's how it got its name, pop art. So the unique thing about pop art is that these artists were taking everyday objects and kind of making them into art, which was so different than what every other artist at the time was trying to do. Andy Warhol might have been the most famous pop artist, but he did not invent the style. The pop art movement began in London, England during the 1950s. Artists like Richard Hamilton and Peter Blake merged mass popular culture, like music, movies, and celebrities with high art and commercial design. Pop art, like I said, was short for popular art and reflected everyday life and common objects and products. New York City artists like Warhol and Roy Lichtenstein popularized the pop art movement in America in the 1960s. So we can see right here, this is when the Andy Warhol um, created. It's called Crushed Campbell's Soup. He um, created this one in 1962, and it is just a can of Campbell's Beef Noodle Soup, but it's been kind of recreated in a way that is very interesting to the eyes. We can see it's like kind of a crushed can. This one is um, a collaboration between Andy Warhol and David Dalton. And it kind of looks, if we're looking up close, this Varum, it looks like kind of this comic book style. And actually, pop art is kind of a style that we see a lot in comics. So that's, if you guys are into comics or have ever looked at a lot of comic strips, that's something where you might have already been exposed to pop art and not even known it. Pop artists moved away from abstract expressionalism, which was the in style of the art. So abstract art is, this is an example right here. Kindergarten actually already learned about Jackson Pollock, who was famous for kind of his splatter painting style. So this is an image that's, although has a lot of emotion and movement and style, it's actually not of any image in particular. So that was kind of the popular style at the time, but pop art was moving away from that. So abstract expressionist artists like Jackson Pollock did not include recognizable subject in their paintings. It was just more about emotions, feelings, and ideas through the formal elements such as line, color, shape, form, and texture. Pop artists did images that anybody walking down Broadway could recognize in a split second. All the great modern things that abstract expressionistic tried so hard not to notice at all. So that's just kind of a roundabout way of saying that these pop artists were creating art that was something that you would recognize, whether it's things like a banana, a hamburger, a flower, a famous person. These artists were depicting things that we saw in everyday life and we knew exactly what it was. Before Warhol became known as the Prince of Pop, he had a successful career as a commercial designer and illustrator in New York City during the 1950s. His early designs and techniques paved the way for his later pop works. Warhol created his early pop art from images he enlarged using an opaque projector. So we have our smart board, but before smart boards, there was these things called projectors, which pretty much took an image of something small and could project it onto a wall larger. So that's what he would do. He would project that image onto a wall and he would put his paper down and he would trace it out. So this black and gray composition right here, this image is an example of Warhol's hand-painted pop. 
and blends both pop and abstraction. So we have both the everyday image that we talk about that's famous in pop art, which is the Coca-Cola can. And then we talked about that abstract style, which is the style that doesn't actually show anything in particular, just more line and movement. And we have that over here. So it kind of combines both ideas. So that answers the question, which parts of his painting are pop and which are abstract? Here's the pop artist er or pop art area, and here is the abstract area. Pop artists used common images from everyday culture as source material for their artwork, including advertisements, consumer goods, consumer goods being like what I was saying, like a hamburger or a brand of soap or a brand of soup, celebrities. Um, Andy Warhol was really well known for his celebrity portraits of Marilyn Monroe and Michael Jackson, famous photographs. And like I mentioned earlier, comic strips. Comic strips had a lot of pop art within them. So they use bold, flat, and hard edge compositions adopted from commercial designs like those found in billboards, murals, magazines, newspaper, and packaging. So this is really cool. This kind of looks like just maybe it's a brand of a box of something you'd find in like a grocery store or a market. But Andy Warhol actually created this as a sculpture known as the Brillo Soap Pads Box that he did in 1964. So it kind of just looks like a recreation of something you'd find in the store, but it's Andy's interpretation of art. He's using common found goods and making them into an art piece. So this was really unique at the time and something that nobody else was doing. Pop artists reflected 1960s culture by using new material in their artworks, including acrylic paints. If you are my fifth graders, we used acrylic paints to make our waves on canvas. Acrylic paint is kind of like um, a little bit like tempera paint, but it's a little bit thicker. And if you get it on your clothes, it doesn't wash out. They also use plastics, photographs, and fluorescent and metallic colors. Fluorescent colors are really bright, like neon colors, and metallic colors are like silver and gold and bronze. Pop artists also experimented with new technologies and method of art making. So they did mass production, which would be like recreating one image multiple times, fabrication, photography, Photographic silkscreen printing was just kind of a fancy way to say it's a different way to print photos. Warhol appropriated, which means he used images without permission from magazine and newspapers and press photos of most popular people of his time. So that means that he would use these images that were in magazines and he would actually recreate them into art, but he didn't have the permission from the magazines. He also used the repetition of media events. What effect does repeating an image over and over have on the viewer? So he became really well known from, for taking an image and repeating it. Warhol erased the boundaries between high art and low art by taking common everyday items and giving them importance as art, questioning what art critics, galleries, and museums considered art. So at the time, like I said, people were considering art to be beautiful paintings of landscapes and people's faces, but he was showing that there was art in everyday life, that things that you found in your day-to-day -day could be considered art, not just these paintings of luxurious images. Once you got pop, you could never see a sign the same way again. And once you thought pop, you could never see America the same way again. And that's something that Andy Warhol said, which kind of means that once you got pop art, you realize that everywhere you go, the world is filled with art. Art is everywhere. A, like the sign that he referenced to could be like a stop sign. You look at a stop sign and you see that it's art. You go into your kitchen and you see all the boxes of food or cans of food in your pantry and you see that that's art. You see that everything is art. And that is such a beautiful perspective that Andy Warhol brought to pop art. And I think that that's something really unique that he did. 
Warhol made this statement on the previous slide while traveling, traveling across America for his second gallery ex exhibition in Los Angeles, California in 1963. What do you think he meant by the statement? And that's something that I kind of explained earlier is that every sign that you see here is art. Pop art continues to influence art, influence, oh my goodness, I can't speak. Pop art continues to influence artists around the world today, such as Japanese artist Takashi Murakami. So I'm pretty sure a lot of you have seen this really cool image of the flowers with the smiling faces. This is something that's popular in um, our world today of art. So pop art didn't just happen in history. It still continues um, to be a part of our culture today. And I hope that you can take some inspiration from Andy Warhol and look around in your house or in your life and see that everything around us is some sort of art. All right, don't forget